G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. In my last video, we took the F8 Crusader and took the trash out. We went and killed some premiums and we had a great time in a very competitive plane. And today we're going to be doing the same thing with the Mirage 2000, except we're going to be taking out the F14. We're going to be hunting them down, not necessarily directly, but the majority of planes here are F14s. And you'll find that the most interesting dogfights in these videos happens to be against F14s because they are at the end of the day the most competitive plane at top tier. The Mirage 2K does come in very very close but I think the Mirage 2000 lacks a couple of dictating factors where it is just not able to swing the battlefield. It's not able to command it in any way that the F14 can. Simply put, the F14 has more missiles, it has better performance, it is easier to use and it comes with a sort of a, a factor that the Mirage 2000 just simply doesn't have, and that's active radar homing missiles. You basically have impunity at higher altitudes if you're an F-14, because no one else is going to want to tussle with an AIM-54 Phoenix at 6,000 meters. They're just not going to be able to get out of the way of it. But the Mirage 2000 does have a lot going up its sleeve, and it's got plenty of tricks that you can pull against your opponents. And I think utilizing this in a more effective way is how you get the Mirage 2000 to really shine. Of course, having a Delta Wing and being a uh, such a small aircraft, the Mirage 2000 has a, an edge, just a slight edge, over the F-14 at low altitudes. In a dogfight at low speed, you'll find that the Mirage 2000 tends to win over the F-14, and of course, the high altitude t tends to be the F-14 stomping ground, simply because it's able to put its wings out. Uh, if you think about planes like the Tar 152H, this particular plane turns exceptionally well at high altitudes, whereas something like the Bearcat would tend to struggle, and it's much the muchness with the Mirage 2000. Now, I am doing the same tactic here that I always do uh, with the Mirage 2000. I'm going to go out on the periphery, and of course, I am going to sneak around looking for targets of opportunity. Now, speaking of opportunity, if you would like to get uh, my decal in-game, and of course, take advantage of these wonderful uh, discounts that we have going at the moment in the Gaijin store, uh, head down to the link in the description below and my decal will be there. That goes a long way to supporting the channel and I will put that money towards a new graphics card. Hopefully you'll be able to see these games in 4K, played in 4K at uh, you know a decent resolution. At the moment I am playing at 1080p and recording at 4K. I've got a 4K screen um, but I would like to be able to play in 1080 so that you've got a little bit more extra detail. It does make the difference and it really does shine through um, when you see other players or other content creators with 1440p displays. Uh, it really does make the difference and I would like to join the higher resolution club. So helping, if you guys could help me out in that respect, uh, of course, if you are spending money, that would be greatly appreciated. Now, back to the gameplay. We are crossing over. I can't really find anyone there within the 37 kilometer radius, and it looks like there's a JA-37 coming towards me and the MiG-23. MiG-23 might dispatch him quite quickly, but it looks like the flares get the better. Um, but I am not going to focus my attention on the Vigan. I think what I'm going to do is sort of look towards the F-14 ahead, try and keep a little bit more altitude, and it looks like the JA-37 is going to be very well occupied by what is in front of it. The F-14 there up below me uh, gets absolutely obliterated and I'm just trying to stay above the pack because it's easier to look straight ahead than it is to look up uh, and so that gives me a little bit of an edge coming down on planes like the F-14, the FGR-2, the MiG-21 and the J-37 over there. So we are going to run into this battle. It looks like there are a lot of enemies and we are going to put the Magic 2s to use right here. The FGR-2 looking super juicy here but I don't think I'm going to go for him just yet. Maybe some guns, but I get nothing. And now it's time to turn the attention there to the Vigan who is harassing the Mirage uh, until I notice the F-14 who has practically stalled out in front of me. So we're going to go guns, guns, guns because that is the easy solution here. Beautiful, foolproof, and a lovely fireball to round that out. The F-5 is looking super thick. Maybe I could go for him next, but he is just at too much of a high aspect ratio to, uh, to go into that fight. MiG-21 here. Looking very juicy as well. Three kilometers out. That's ideal distance for the Magic 2. And the F4E is also looking super thick. I'm going to go Magic 2 here. Send it away. Hopefully it lands. And it does tried and true. So I have my two missiles left with my, my two semi-active radar homing missiles. 
Uh, but unfortunately for my other Matra Magic, it didn't really make home on the MiG-21 here. So because he's energy trapped, I'm going to switch the afterburner off and then again go guns, guns, guns. There we go. Letting it rip. Kill number three. Super easy. The Mirage tends to sort of do its best at these lower altitudes, but it also tends to do its best when it's in a, uh, a bit of a furball. Not necessarily a super huge furball, but certainly a little furball because it does have the ability to tussle and dogfight. But it also does need a little bit to, uh, to stretch its legs a little bit. So speaking of stretching its legs, we are going to stretch the legs here of the Martra Super 530D, which I don't know where that goes, but it's all right because the guys run out of fuel anyway, and it lands me with a beautiful critical hit. Yeah, he's eventually going to go down, and that's pretty much all she wrote in terms of kills for this battle. But I tell you what, we are going to get some uh, some interesting little bit of fun in a couple of seconds. There is still one more F-14A to kill. Not just this one, who's truly, truly out of fuel. Uh, I'm not sure why he's burning, but he's out of fuel. At least that's what he told me. But here we go. Here's this last clip, the F-14A. Really, really struggling. And this is what I'd like to sort of hone in. We really have a strong, strong advantage here. But unfortunately, I goofed the missile. And you know what? It's left me in a bit of a tough spot. I've definitely not got enough ammo. I have got enough fuel. And all I'm going to do here is try and pretend that I am in the, uh, the, the mood to kill. I'm in a position to kill. And hopefully, this should get me a nice little maneuver kill. It looks like he goofs it there. And that gives me the maneuver kill. I'm going to take that as an ace, ladies and gentlemen. Um, of course, it doesn't, doesn't have to be. But you know what? That's one of the benefits of being the Mirage 2000. You have that ability at low altitude. And you can just see the, the raw strength that you get with that delta wing and those leading edge slats that the F-14A just simply doesn't get. Now, moving on here, we are on uh, this snow map. I believe it's called Sun. Can't quite remember. But at the end of the day... This particular map has a uh, fairly distinct pattern that the enemies tend to take. You tend to go either straight into the battle or they go along this sort of weird looking canyon thingy. Now I have spotted an enemy here on the radar. I'm going to ping it briefly just to locate it and then I'm going to take it off. So maybe if he's paying attention he's going to change but it looks like he's not. He's an F5. I'm going to load up the magic twos and let them rip. There's another one, and then there's an A-10. The A-10 is a good candidate here for guns, and whilst this F-5 here does not see what's going on, I'm going to launch another 530 Super at the A-10. Hopefully that lands home. Beautiful. And then we're going to go for magic number three here, and just like that, we are able to get ourselves within the range of three kills very, very easily. Uh, unfortunately, I get snaked at the last second, but you know what? That's no problem. Um, we're going to go for the Vigan here. Vigan is looking super thick. We are going to go for that Rope-A-Dope. And the, the Vigan does one thing that the Mirage doesn't, and that is bleed speed. The Vigan is a heavy, heavy boy. And so you can use your nimbleness to its advantage. You bleed a lot of speed in the Vigan, more so than the Mirage, I found. And it seems that the Vigan also has to carry a lot of fuel with it. So you do end up in a situation where you do not get that luxury of having the lighter plane. In fact, that goes to the M2K. Uh, this Vigan has decided to join the fray with the Mirage uh, on, on my team as well. Um, and I'm hoping to get a lock, but using the Pulse Doppler mode, if someone is heading away from you, you're going to get a less patent lock. And of course, when someone starts to notch you, uh, you completely lose that lock altogether. On top of that, you're going to lose range with your with your missile. And I'm just going to wait until the, the Vigan goes either head on or goes for something else or goes slow. And that is when I'm going to strike with the guns because this plane has enough power to tussle with the Vigan in a dogfight. The Vigan is faster, um, admittedly heavier, has more missiles, and I would argue has... Uh, some better missiles in the RB-71 or 74. I can't quite remember. It's essentially the AIM-7F Sparrow, um, or, or the Skyflash, rather. So there are trade-offs. And I do believe, though, that the M2K is a better plane. They are very close. And we are still doing some wonderful work here with the Mirage. We're getting to that top speed. Well, that's one thing that I haven't brought up this video. The top speed of the Mirage 2000 is a measly 1360 kilometers per hour at sea level. So you can't really outrun anything. 
you're not going to be outrunning phantoms. Sorry, you're not going to be outrunning uh, uh, the uh, Tomcat. You're not going to be outrunning the Vigan. You're certainly not going to be outrunning the MLD. And uh, you can barely outrun the F5. So you haven't really got that much in the way of speed. But you do have a fair bit in the way of turning. And that's what you use the Mirage 2000 for. So we're going to take this F14A out. He's a pretty easy kill. And this F5 gets absolutely nuked by the other Mirage 2000, despite them trading. Very disappointing. But that is, again, another easy four kills. Sitting on the periphery, coming out of nowhere, and of course, using our dogfighting capabilities. I would easily say that this is one of the best planes in the game, and I think this is one of my favorite planes at top tier at the moment, simply because of its ability to dictate a dogfight, especially a 1v1. Um, it doesn't necessarily dictate the merge, as you can see here, we're getting phoenixed out the arsehole, and it looks like I need to pull a fast one before I absolutely get smashed by phoenixes everywhere. There are a lot of these missiles coming in, and this is the one thing that throws the Mirage 2000 off. The moment you start to turn a lot, you start losing speed, and then you lose enough speed to become a bit of an easy target for your opponents. If there are enough F-14s around, they can dogpile you without a problem, and there's nothing that you can do. There's nothing your team can do, and so you end up very, very salty very early. If you can survive that first wave by simply turning away and just getting out of there, just like not even bothering, don't even entertain the, the, the phoenixes, don't fly low, just turn your plane around and get the hell out of there, and the phoenixes end up being a little bit null and void. Now, you can't really do that at high altitude, but you can at low altitude, and this is where the, the Mirage 2000 is at its best. It is at its best at sea level, so I would absolutely use it there. Now, we aren't at sea level at the moment. We're at 4,800 meters, or 4,900 meters, and we are going to dive on F-14s. And that's simply because, like I said earlier, it is easier to look straight ahead than it is to look directly up. And so it means that you are a harder target to spot for people that are preoccupied. And I'm going to go for two easy, easy kills here on F-14s. I've noticed that I've been, uh, I've been spiked with the RWR. And so I'm just going to book it out of there. I'm going to use a little bit of what speed I have left to try and get away from these missiles. But it looks like a very very desperate situation. I almost fear that I'm not going to live in a situation like that, and my team is very rapidly deteriorating, so we need to pull a rabbit out of the hat quite quickly, and the rabbit tends to be a teammate. So we're going to move on to this F-14, but unfortunately the F-14 gets killed, so the A-70 is our next victim. I'm going to prep a Martra Super, and I'm just going to send it, see what happens, and it lands beautifully. Wasn't a very valuable kill, but it's a kill nonetheless. It's something to sort of take the enemy with me. And whilst this F-14 has gotten himself very up shit creek without a paddle, he's going to go and try and target the MiG-21 Biss. And so that leaves him open to me with a nice little critical hit there on his wing or on his elevator. Uh, and he still gets the shot off on this F-4EJ. Very unfortunate for him. But this should be it with me absolutely ass blasting him. Now that leaves three or four enemies left. And this is optimal situation for me. So I'm going to send uh, one around to the F5. And it kind of just does a weird nothing. I don't even know what that is. It's so strange. Missiles occasionally behave like this. But for the most part, there's not much to it. Now, thankfully for me, we fast forward about 10 minutes. Because most of it is sort of nothing dogfighting. The F14 is the only one left. But he's been hovering around the airfield. I'm not really sure if he's low on fuel. But he certainly has a lot of missiles because he's just come back from the airfield. Uh, I can't gain on him. He is the one that is eventually going to dictate the fight. I'm going to try and, you know, uh, try and get him to come around. But you can see there, I don't get those two full circles, which means that my missile will run out of range before it gets to the target. And so I can't do anything. I have to wait for him to re-engage. I'm just going to chase him. And this is the problem here with the Mirage 2000. This is why I believe that the F-14 is better, simply because it is able to dictate where the fight happens, when it happens, how it happens, and with what missiles, and at what range. The Phoenixes are so valuable that they just do everything to dictate the fight. Now, this F-14 might get a little bit bored, but I am, like I've said, running out of speed. I've got enough fuel. I've got enough ammunition. It's just a matter of the F-14 turning around and actually engaging me. So maybe I should 
bait him. Maybe I could find a way to get him to come around. Um, and I think eventually that's what I might do. I might just sort of pitch up and wait for him to come around or, or pretend that I'm disinterested and see if I can get him to follow and bait him into an engagement. I'm going to pitch up here, switch the afterburner back on, try and gain a little bit of energy, try and gain a little bit of something to get back at this guy. I have got my Mark 1 eyeball on him, and it looks like just as he disappears out of view, he's going to turn around and try and go for the Aim 7 head-on, and uh, that does work in some circumstances, but I'm going to send the Matra Magic his way instead, and that's going to make him panic. We quickly move out of the way of his missile, and the dogfight begins. I'm going to pitch straight up, and this is a bit of a mistake, because like I've said earlier, the F-14 has its sort of way at these higher altitudes, and you can just see how quickly he's turned around. I'm going to go for the spooky head-on. Uh, unfortunately for him, he takes the critical hit, but the fight isn't over yet. We're still at 3,300 meters, and I have switched my afterburner off, but look how quickly this guy's turning around. This is incredibly spooky. Like, he's absolutely winning this dogfight right now because I am not able to keep up with him. I just can't generate the lift, and I could jettison my missiles, but I don't want to, to be honest. He's already gotten behind me. But I don't have the end of the fight just yet. I'm going to slow down. I'm going to lower my throttle all the way and just get out of the way of his guns. I'm trying desperately to bleed as much energy as possible and bring the fight down to lower altitude. If I can get that fight down at lower altitude, I know that the Delta Wing and the Leading Edge Slats will take me to victory. And I almost clip him in the face. This is getting really, really close. I'm trying so desperately just to stay out of his guns long enough to get down to the deck and we're getting very close so it's starting to get to the point where I will take the advantage. I'm going to sink into his uh, into his airframe there and now I have the upper hand. Boom, off he goes and that is all she wrote. That is the best dogfight I've had in such a long time and it comes from the M2K dropping it down to that lower altitude and using that AOA to get on target. Now of course that is uh, you know a rarity but I will take it nonetheless. So moving on to our final match here we are going to go and sit around on the periphery again because that is the way that you play this plane. In fact this is the way you play top tier. It's not a uh, sort of rush in and just have at it mode kind of like the lower tiers of jets where you kind of can do that you know that sort of 8.7, 9.0 you won't you won't make anything at that tier. Um, in fact, you'll be very lucky to make it out alive at this tier. You can see here that the missile does definitely know where it is, and I can actually see it. At, it it's, so, it's so close that I can, I can touch it, I can kiss it even, and I don't want to do that because then that means that I pay a repair cost. You can see that this guy, whoever it is, is firing a lot of missiles and is very intent on shooting me down in particular. Not because I'm a YouTuber, but I think I'm just the first target that this guy has managed to spot. And in fact, it is not a wise idea to do that because you're going to end up with uh, no missiles and you're going to end up with uh, maybe a whole enemy team chasing you on the, uh, on, the, on the trailing end. So we are now in a situation where we have an advantage. We don't have anyone going for us. And so we can, you know, enact our support fighter role. There are... Uh, there's a distinct numbers advantage here, but you know, if I can get the numbers advantage rolling further, the domino effect allows me to further my advantage. Five kilometers is a little ambitious, but we're going to go with that four kilometer. Looking super juicy, but the F4J presents itself as the juicier target. Now, as I get within that two kilometer or that two and a half kilometer range, the F4 EJ is also looking super juicy. That one goes, the EJ is about to go, and there goes two very easy kills. I'm going to go for the F-14 here, but it looks like it's just too ambitious. And by that time, all the other enemies have gone within uh, sort of bye-bye distance. Now, I am going to exploit my turning capabilities here. I'm going to go straight over, and I'm just double-checking to make sure that there's no one here at altitude that is going to come and eat me. So we are going to go for this F-14 looking here. But I spot this other guy. We're going to go for the vertical. And again, the dogfight begins. Now, this guy has got his wings in the uh, swept position so it does mean that I'm able to get on super easy I miss my shots because I'm an excellent pilot but that's okay he's goofed his shots again he's uh, not in a great situation but nor am I and there goes the weird keyboard shot it's just beautiful it's a it's a beautiful thing to see and I get kill number three nice and easy there because the f14 absolutely goofs his shots now 
two other F14s go down with this particular one. And so that leaves two left. So I'm going to go one with the Super 530. Uh, it looks like I'm just within a good range. I think a good range for these is about four kilometers. Um, and if they're going to merge, uh, you know, try and make it super, super good. Try not to let them notch, uh, or at least try and hope that they don't notch. But we've got now kill number four here, and we are going to go for kill number five in this last one. It looks like he's chasing down the uh, other Mirage. So I'm just going to let my team know that I'm going to go for him. I'm going to try and give the Mirage a hand. They exchange it a little head on, no dice, and hopefully the F14 will turn around and face the Mirage in another, uh, another, another run. Um, and again, like you can see, I have no way of dictating this fight. I am gaining on this F14, but it's likely because he is damaged. Uh, he could also be stock, but there's not a lot of leeway I've got left. And you can see that he is just now starting to get some distance from me. It's only very slight and we're, we're sort of matching speed. But if this is an F14A in a damaged state and I'm pushing the red line like very, very hard, I'm three kilometers away from ripping my wings, uh, there's not a lot that you can do against a spaded and perfectly healthy F14A. you got to remember that this thing is, at the end of the day, the Apex Predator, and the Mirage 2K is the little beta male compared to the F14. Although, you know, not beta in every single sense of the word. You can still do wonderful things in this plane, and as the F14 decides he wants to roll over, he's gone at that 5km mark. I'm going to go for the shot here, going to let it rip, and it's going to land fucking beautifully in a critical hit. It's just really, really nice. Now, what's not nice is this moment here. I am absolutely code brown, and I make it out just in time. The F14 sits down and lands face first into the dirt, giving me another ace. I've had so much fun playing the M2K, and I think everyone else will too, once they get the hang of it. As long as you don't have teams that commit seppuku early on in the game, I think you'll be fine with the Mirage. It is very, very competitive. So ladies and gents, that does it for today. I hope you, sincerely, I hope you enjoyed. Of course, if you would like to support the channel, the decal is the best way, but you've also got merch, Patreon, just putting a like on, uh, on the video and, you know, telling your friends, leaving a subscription, anything helps. It is just uh, great to see all the support and I sincerely appreciate every little bit of it. Anyway, ladies and gents, that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Take care and I'll catch you next time.